What's up ladies and gentlemen, welcome to The Good, The Bad and The Stupid. It's Wednesday the 30th of September. Well it is where I am, I don't know where you are in the world. Maybe it's not, maybe it's changed over to another day. Some people are listening in Australia and New Zealand apparently. If you are from there, g'day, g'day down there. <laughs> um, well it's raining here so you've probably got the nice sunshine kicking in. It's getting to summer now isn't it in Australia and New Zealand. Or uh, you're still on the last bit of the winter. We're fucking pissing down outside here. You might even hear it on the on the uh, pick it up on the podcast. It's not sound effects. It's not me having a piss or something like that in the toilet, <laughs> making it sound like it's raining on the windows. I don't know why I said that, but yeah, you get what I mean. Typical British weather coming at me, coming at us, should I say? Um, <clears throat> the real weather's kicked in now. Should get this till roughly about this time next uh, March or April time. Oh well, anyway, never mind. Sunshine. We'll get we'll get a few days of sunshine. I'll let you know when we do. I'll be uh, I'll be the, I'm, I am the weatherman of uh, this podcast as well because I have to do I have to do bloody everything. I have to do the weather. I have to do the news report. I have to do the bloody uh, cutting out stuff out of the newspapers. It's all it's all uh, mud cons here, all all mud modern technology. I have to be the the, the sound man, the the video recorder man the editor, the uploader, and then the only one who, who fucking watches it. <laughs> Loads of people listen to it. I'm the only one who, who watch it. So uh, if you're listening, there's a video. Yes, there's a video. It's on YouTube. Check it out. Anyway, Brexit people, anybody who's been kicked out of the country, if we kicked you out of the country uh, over the last uh, year or so over Brexit, don't worry because you're welcome back now because we need you. <laughs> we're short of bricklayers. We're short of butchers. We're short of welders. And uh, the immigration rules must be uh, relaxed to, uh, and we're short of senior care workers, nursing assistants. Why everybody's losing their jobs? I mean, I don't mind. Come back. I don't think we should have kicked you all out in the first place. But the thing is, loads of people are losing their jobs in all other areas, so because of the COVID. So why don't you just? Why can't then people go and do them jobs? All right, they're not trained. That's I guess that's the reason. But you can train up while you're on the job bricklayers you get the guy carrying the shit for you first and then you can train him but that's just the way it is they want professionals so anyway get your pack your bags get yourself back over here <laughs> wherever you're from romania poland uh spain italy i don't mind come over we need you it's good that they've fucking got shit going on because you think everything would just grind to a stop at least it hasn't got to that stage yet the, the HS2 still kicking on, the HS2 train, the fast speed train that's going to link Birmingham to London. It's going to rip through the countryside, ruin all that, but us Brummies will be able to get to London in 42 minutes. That is what it's all about. It ain't even about that anyway. It's about Londoners being able to move out of London, and it's about Londoners being able to fucking go and buy somewhere cheap because London's... I mean, everywhere's overpriced anyway, but London is ridiculous. If you try and buy a fucking... Anywhere to live in London, you you just you laughed at you laughed at the place. Out of anybody, uh, I could never afford to live in London. And anybody who's young, younger than me, should I say, not young, younger than me, they ain't got a fucking cat in house chance. You just about, I don't think you'd even afford to if there was if there was a, a a cleared land, a bit of cleared space with a load of tents on it, you wouldn't even be able to afford to fucking live in there. I'm telling you, it's a joke. So. Uh, that's what the H well the HS2 is about reconnecting for business and stuff. But as soon as that happens, all the Londoners will be bolting out of London because they can live in Birmingham and they can commute back to London and probably still get to work in the in the same time, but have a house for a third of what they were paying in London. So makes sense, makes economical sense. Apart from when you get on the train and there's fucking no seats and you're crammed on and you're sitting on the floor or everybody's squashed in because there's like they won't be able to pay for it. It'll become another white elephant. So they'll have to oversell the seats, which is what they do anyway. So everybody be crammed on. Sardines. Shit. Have you ever been in rush on a rush hour train in England? It is horrible. I'll tell you what. I say now, I've seen that with some of those videos of the Japanese ones. <laughs> they ain't no fucking picnic either. It's just like it everywhere. And it were overpopulated. And everybody, all the rich people have got all the money, so we can't fucking, we can't, we have to have shit railways. We have to have fucking, you seen that one in Japan, where, Japan, where everybody's, uh, they're all just very pleasantly 
being pushed onto the train by the conductor. There isn't even a, you wouldn't even get a fucking uh, another sock on that van on, on that uh, train carriage. That's how how they uh, use up that space, and then the, the, the conductor pushes them in, and then the door shuts. But none of them are complaining. There's nobody tutting, nobody moaning. In England, believe me, people are fucking pissed right off. <laughs> They're too polite over there. Anyway, that was pre-COVID. I, I guess there's a bit more space at the moment. Um, Young people, any of you young people, you don't know the old language apparently, you don't know what these words are. Sozzled, bunk, wally and randy. <laughs> even I don't use them words. I'm fucking older than you and I don't use them words. That's even older than my generation. I know what they are. I've never used them. They're fucking, they're like some, something some twee person would say. Oh, I'm sozzled. Does anybody know what sozzled is? If you're from another country, that means pissed, pissed. That's what that means. Bunk, bunk. Anybody know what bunk means? Oh yeah, well, I bunked them last night. I bunked them last night. That's another word I wouldn't use. Bunk, if you don't know what that means, shag. That's what that means. Any youngsters out there? Wally. You don't know what wally, wally means? Who, who says these words? Wally. Wally means idiot. Prat. <laughs> uh, twat. There's another word for him. Wally. That's uh, the polite way. Randy. Randy, anybody know what Randy means? Randy means horny or uh, on heat or fucking, um, what's it called? Sex, sex uh, crazed. That's the polite way of saying that. So if you see anybody, and, uh, you know, most of us are all, all of those in one on some occasions. So uh, it just depends on uh, how much drugs you've taken, I imagine. Anyway, so yeah, so what other words are there? There's a lot of, there's hundreds more. But, you get the gist. The youngsters aren't up to scratch. They've got their own words. I can't understand half the fucking things that some of them are saying. Uh, or, or what they're saying, what they're saying. They've got some really strange way of, a way of talking. I know we had our little lingo when we were younger. Our little fucking uh, trendy words and whatever. But some of the things they come out with now, it don't even make no sense. <laughs> I do sound like an old uh, an old fart to a youngster. Today. That's what it is. It's meant to be so they don't... You don't talk like them, so you don't make no sense. You're meant to be like, if you, if they, if I did understand it, I'd be trying to be cool. And if I did understand it, then they would have to change their words because it's uncool that I'm down with them. <laughs> so, uh, you get it? That's the way it works. That's the way the generations work. Billions of litres of water are being wasted every week by the toilets, which are supposed to cut losses. Eco toilets are not eco-friendly. That's the gist of that. <laughs> So, uh, especially if you have to flush it more than once, how big's the hole? Is it not taking it down too uh, too well? Is it all floating back? Have you got like um, a few rafts, and um, or you're using too much toilet roll? Are you one of these fucking toilet roll wankers from the from the fucking uh, supermarket buying too much toilet roll, and then you've got no room to move in your kitchen, so that you end up starting to fucking wipe your ass like you know you're rubbing the skin off your ass. That's how much toilet roll you're using. <laughs> Because you want to use up, free up the space in the kitchen. So yeah, but you, 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 you fucked yourself up there. But then you're shoving it down your fucking eco toilets, and it ain't going anywhere. Or you're flushing too much water, billions of liters of water. So uh, anyway, in London, don't worry, that'll come back around as you're drinking water. So that's fine. It's in a continuous cycle, isn't it? Isn't that the way it is in London? They're not too, uh, they ain't far from, they, they haven't got a reservoir nearby, so they have to recycle the water. There's, there was a saying that the, the London water's been through eight baths. So, uh, yeah, enjoy in, enjoy that when you're having a nice glass of water, when you're a tourist over here, pouring that drink out your tap. It's been in somebody's, it's been through eight baths. Now, I'm not, don't anybody from the water board get, on to, get in touch and start dissing me. Saying I don't, I'm, I'm coming out with bullshit facts. I don't know my facts. That's just what I was told, and I was told that in the pub. Everybody knows everything's fucking true when you're in the pub. That's where all the true stuff's told. Everybody, it all makes. That's where everybody gets all, all their facts down the pub. Um, what else was I going to say? A medium has labelled Poundland utterly irresponsible for selling one pound Halloween Ouija boards. I didn't know they sold them. I have to go down and get one, make one on this podcast, make a séance. Or I need somebody else. I'll have to do it with Dave, the ghost. I have got a ghost here called Dave. You have to check some of the older videos and you'll check that. You'll, you'll meet him. But 
Yeah, me and him could do a seance, although I'm meant to be calling him up. No, I'm going to have to get somebody around and we're going to have to talk to Dave the Ghost. I say, why does he keep swinging the fucking door open when I'm doing my podcast? He's never around when, uh, any other time of the day. When, whenever I'm doing this podcast, he comes in. It's usually when I'm talking about sexual things or uh, something along those lines. Or I'm dissing ghosts. And he comes in, sticks his head in. He goes, you what? You what, mate? That's why I imagine him saying, I can't hear him. But you what, mate? You say something. You uh, <laughs> say something about me. Anyway, Ouija boards at Poundland. A pound Ouija boards? That's and a, a medium anyway has got uh, got pissed off. She says the board, this board. Uh, well, she said they may destroy their lives in every way. <laughs> you imagine from something from Poundland, and she said, the, and, and somebody else has said that this board doesn't work. It hasn't moved. <laughs> Somebody's complained and said the board doesn't work. It hasn't moved. I want my money back. It's a fucking pound, and you ain't doing it right. I tell you what, when it does move, you won't be able to fucking you. you you won't be going. Um, you'll be taking it back anyway for your money back then because you'll be screaming your head off. You'll be saying it does work. Give me my money back. I thought it was a joke. That's the reason to take it back. That'd be funny. But anyway, uh, so yeah, it's a Ouija board. It's a Ouija board. If you get people on it, anyway, it's collective. I don't want to tell you. I don't want to spoil it for you. But a lot of that stuff is collective minds. They all sort of touching the glass at the same time, and you don't. Nobody's moving it, but it moves. That's because you're doing it interconnected. You all become one in some way or shape or form. Don't check with me, ask Darren Brown. Anyway, five parrots. <coughs> five parrots have been uh, separated after encouraging... Covering it. <laughs> five parrots have been separated after encouraging each other to swear. That's good, isn't it? That's brilliant. Imagine that, they're all fucking slagging each other off, the parrots. Or giving it, you up, mate, you fuck off. You fuck off, mate. You fuck off, no, you fuck off. You, you. So they picked that up off, the, off, the, uh, off one of the owners, and then it spread, that, that line has spread around all the parrots. And they're all saying to each other, you fuck off, no, you fuck off, no, you fuck off, no, you fuck off. <laughs> That'd be cool. And there's uh, there's 200 in there in this enclosure, so they've had to take the five out before the 200 start doing it. Otherwise, it'd be like a chorus then, wouldn't it? A parrot chorus swearing. <laughs> That'd be fucking hilarious. I'd love to hear that. Bom, 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 bye, yeah, fuck off. <laughs> um, what was that? That's the frog song. That's not the parrot song, is it? That's Paul McCartney's shittiest ever song. Uh, yeah, Billy, Eric, Tyson, Jade, and Elsie. Lincolnshire Wildlife Centre. They all they love to swear up there up north. They love swearing like me. So uh, if I ever had a parrot, I tell you what, it would be hilarious because it would be picking it up off me because I don't even know I do it. But I've listened back to some of these recordings and I know I swear a lot, a lot more than I thought I did. Let's put it that way. But it's good. It's called passion. It's called uh, intelligence. Anyway, a lot of places you read, check it out on the internet. Intelligent people swear a lot, not people who say randy. Randy, Mandy, what was the other one? Randy's sozzled and um, Wally. Nobody nobody intelligent says that. People who say that are wet, wet people. Who, um, <laughs> they, you know, they don't want to bring themselves to swear, so they say Wally instead of twat. Anyway, t last one I'm going to do, I think. Is it the last one I'm going to do? Yeah, last one I'm going to do. Short short episode. Two books have been returned after in back... Two books have been returned to Basingstoke after 48 years. Well, to Basingstoke. To Basingstoke Library after 48 years they were taken out. And the guys took them back. And uh, they're not going to charge him the £8,000 fine. Charge him! Because he probably thought, oh, I'm going to get away with it because they ain't going to remember. Everyone's dead by now. But there's probably that in the library. When somebody gets in there, they work there forever, don't they? And that woman who's been there for fucking 48 years... She remembers that book was taken out. £8,000 fine. Anyway, a fine's a fine. So a fine's only a fine if you take it out and you bring it back two weeks later. That is like, you know, somebody's a slow reader and they bring it back 48 years later and they avoid the fine. It might, that's just encouraging people to, to keep the books, to take them back. Say, oh, fuck it, I'll take it back. I'll take it back when I'm 95. I can't be bothered. I ain't got no, you know, I'm going to put my feet up for a few years. Anyway, and take my time with it. <laughs> or oh, I've read it now, and then fuck it, I'm still not going to take it back till I'm 95. And then, because that's the only time that I'm going to avoid the fees. If I take it back anywhere in between, they're going to make me charge. They're going to charge me 300, 400 quid. I'm banned from the library for not taking a book back. Banned. 
They wouldn't let me. They wouldn't let. I wanted to go in there and use the computers and everything. They said uh, they checked me and they said, "No, sorry, you're banned <laughs> from the library." And it wasn't even. I think I let somebody take books out on my card, and they never took them back. Big, big mistake. Never ever. Same as if you borrow anybody a book, you never get it back. And if you do get it back, they fucking fucked all the edges of it up. It's all crinkled. You give them back a pristine. You borrow them a pristine book. All nice. You kept it all nice because you, you know, look, look, looking nice on your shelf. You borrow it to somebody. They've had it in the bath. They've fucking folded the pages round. They've like, you know, they're eating food while they're turning the pages, and you got like pizza and cheese stains on the books on the pages. Fuck you. Nobody else is borrowing another book from me. Go to the library and get your fines and work that out. I'll send the woman round there. They need they need to have a bit of a heavy team, I think, like the bailiffs coming round. Book bailiffs. Let's let's fucking get that one on them. Anyway, uh, I'm going to leave it there and uh, I'll do another one tomorrow most likely. See you later. Bye.